Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're discussing visa interview waivers. So this is for the United States immigration process. We're talking about visa interviews occurring at the U.S. Embassy here in Bangkok. Again, this, this information may be somewhat useful for folks in other jurisdictions. We primarily operate out of Thailand, so we're going to be doing this from the standpoint of looking at it you know, at the U.S. Embassy in Thailand here. Uh, I thought of making this video after reading a recent article from travel.state.gov. article is titled, Update on Worldwide Visa Operations, Improved Efficiency Through Interview Waivers. Now, as a preface, understand we're not talking about what's called an I-601 waiver, an I-212 waiver. I've done other videos on this channel about the I-601 and the I-212, not what we're talking about here. The I-601 is a waiver of inadmissibility, so if somebody's been found they've been denied a visa at an interview, usually, a, usually, usually an immigrant visa case, denied a visa at the embassy, and then you have to deal with the waiver process in order to possibly overcome that denial. Meanwhile, I-212 waivers oftentimes occur as a result of somebody being put through what's called uh, expedited removal from the United States. Basically, they were removed, they were deported, but it's in an expedited, truncated proceeding and they are shipped back out of the country and they want to come back in. In order to deal with that, you need to deal with an I-212. Not what we're talking about here, not that kind of waiver. We're talking about a waiver of the actual physical interview requirement. So in the past, almost all, in fact, virtually every visa case I ever saw, because I came in after, I came into the sort of the business, if you will, of dealing with U.S. immigration after 9-11. Prior to 9-11, they didn't do a ton of in-person interviews. They did some, but not a ton. And then post 9-11, that kind of fell by the wayside. Up until the pandemic, the it, they were doing pretty much everything as, in an interview format. They wanted to have an interview. And then that changed when the pandemic came in. And let me go ahead and quote directly from travel.state.gov. Again, update on worldwide visa operations improved efficiency, efficiency through interview waivers. Quoting directly, during the pandemic, the Department of State coordinated with the Department of Homeland Security to waive in-person interviews for several key visa categories, including for many students and temporary workers integral to supply chain. Quoting further, in addition, applicants renewing non-immigrant visas in the same classification within 48 months of their prior visa's expiration are now eligible to apply without an in-person interview in their country of nationality or residence. This has already reduced the wait time for an interview appointment at many embassies and consulates. We estimate 30% of worldwide non-immigrant visa applicants may be eligible for an interview waiver, freeing up in-person interview appointments for those applicants who still require an in-person interview. So, a couple of things to unpack here. I definitely think in terms of you know striving for efficiency, I'm happy to see Department of State doing that. I think there could be some unforeseen downsides to not having interviews in person in the future. A, a number of them, most notably, you know, consular officers when you're in an in-person setting can make, you know, they can make findings based on exigent circumstances. You have a you have at least a chance to tell your side of the story. Now, under Section 214B of the Immigration Nationality Act, that kind of gets mitigated a lot, if not to the point of being almost stamped completely out, depending on the circumstances. But at least you're dealing with somebody in person. And I can see we're doing it digitally, online, whatever you want to call it, could have some implications with respect to case processing, the ultimate decisions in cases. I, I, I could see folks, I could see denial rates go up, quite honestly, just because you know, the person that's doing the interview isn't seeing them in person, and it's, it kind of impersonalizes it, and it could make folks more apt to deny. You know, I'm not saying there's any bias involved. I just think when you're not looking somebody in the eye, it's a very different experience. Meanwhile, the thing that should be taken away from this video for those who are looking at, for example, a K-1 fiancé visa or an immigrant spouse visa is this does not apply to the immigrant visa unit, at least as of the time of this video. This is only being rolled out with respect to non-immigrant visas, things like, as they noted, student visas. Wouldn't shock me to see this being rolled out for tourist visas sometime soon, if they're not already doing it. 
and other types of non-immigrant visa categories, even non-immigrant working visas, things like the H-1 category, you know, I could see there being, or the L-1 or something, I could, and maybe even an E visa, they, I could see a set of circumstances where they might say, yeah, we're just gonna do those online. Again, I think it's gonna depend on the post, gonna depend on a, depend on a variety of factors. But one thing that I will say is, yeah, on the one side, it does make things more efficient. You may be looking at more appointments, but on the downside, you're not gonna be dealing with somebody in person, and there are negative consequences to that kind of scenario.